Hi guys, and welcome back to Petrolhead Podcasts. The Toyota Land Cruiser has been the gold standard luxury off-road 4x4 for decades now. With a legacy spanning 70 years and a reputation for reliability and unstoppable all-terrain prowess known the world over, it is understandable for Toyota to take a lot of time to engineer every new Land Cruiser generation. The all-new Land Cruiser 300 series has just been launched worldwide and is the first redesign for the nameplate in 14 years. With such high expectations, we begin to wonder if it will live up to the legacy of its predecessor, the 200 series, and whether it is a notable enough improvement. Join me as I compare the 300 series with the 200 to highlight the key differences and changes with the new model. But before I proceed, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel to be the first to see more amazing content like this in the future. First of all, looking at exterior designs, the new model is very much an evolution of the 200 series. The cars share the same 2850mm wheelbase, the same width and the length of the two cars are also within millimeters of each other. The new model is taller and has a higher hood though, giving it more presence up front and when viewed from the side. The big multi-slatted grille that flows into the headlamps is similar for both cars, although the 300 series has much slimmer headlamps and now features dynamic turn signals. On the side, the 300 series is clearly the newer design with the more chiseled window lines and more defined sculpturing, especially around the wheel arches, that make the 200 series look slab-sided. The new multi-spoke 20-inch wheels also look a lot more sophisticated than the ones on the 200 series. Round back, the tail lights are much slimmer again and have more modern looking optics inside, and the lack of chrome on the tailgate is a welcome change. Overall, the new design is rather evolutionary and conservative, but modern and distinctive enough. On the inside, the 300 series is in a completely different league to the 200. The dashboard design with a large floating 12.3 inch display is impressive, and so is the simplified and more upmarket look for the off-road controls. In contrast, the old car with its low resolution inset 9 inch screen looks dated, especially considering the screen did not support Apple CarPlay, which the new model finally does. The new thick rim steering wheel and wide shifter are more befitting of the car's status as Toyota's flagship model in many parts of the world compared to the flimsy items from the old car, and the semi-digital dials with a 7-inch display are a big step up from the old car's analog gauges with 4.2-inch display. The material quality also seems to have taken a big step forward, with more convincing looking leathers, wood and metal finishes than the plasticky feeling 200 series. The 300 still only has a normal sunroof though, as opposed to a more modern panoramic roof, which is a shame. In terms of overall space, the cars are pretty similar, although the new car finally has electrically folding third row of seats that fold flat into the boot floor compared to the cumbersome setup from the 200 series that fold up onto the sides and as a result, eat into cargo volume. Overall, the interior is a massive step up from the 200 series and a much needed refresh that makes the car feel up to date. In terms of mechanicals, the new 300 series is available with a 3.3 litre twin turbo V6 diesel and a 3.5 litre twin turbo V6 gasoline engine. The new diesel produces 227 kilowatts, which is around 305 horsepower, and 700 newton meters of torque, which is 516 pound feet. These figures are notable increases over the 200 series' 4.5 litre twin turbo VH, which made 200 kilowatts and 650 newton meters. The 3.5 litre petrol engine produces 305 kilowatts, which is around 410 horsepower, and 650 newton meters, which is 479 pound feet. These are also big increases over the 200 series 5.7 litre naturally aspirated V8, which produced 270 kilowatts and 530 newton meters in most markets. Both new engines are mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission, again, a step up from the old diesel's 6 speed and the old petrol's 8 speed transmissions. The car is based on the new TNGAF ladder frame chassis, which is a modular platform that will also underpin the likes of the new Tundra and Lexus LX models, and possibly even the new Hilux and Tacoma in future. The frame is claimed to be 20% stiffer and the overall vehicle 200kg lighter than the 200 series. The newly developed suspension system, although still being a double wishbone front and rigid axle rear setup like the 200, has repositioned suspension arms, rear shock absorbers and a new adaptive damping system for improved stability and comfort. Overall, the new engine, transmission and suspension are notable improvements and set up the 300 series well against the competition. Finally, for the all-important off-road abilities, the new 300 series builds on the strong foundation of the 200. Both have permanent four-wheel drive systems with low range and a center diff lock, as well as Toyota's multi-terrain select terrain management system, crawl control, low-speed off-road cruise control, off-road turn assist, and multi-terrain monitor 360-degree off-road cameras. The 300 series is now available with an evolution of the KDSS kinetic dynamic suspension system that debuted on the 200 series, now known as the eKDSS. 
the system automatically controls each front and rear stabilizer independently, depending on road conditions, for more precise stabilization adjustments and improved articulation. Furthermore, it also now is available with electronic front and rear diff locks compared to the 200 series that only had a center diff lock in most parts of the world and a rear diff lock option in select markets. However, it is a shame that the previous height adjustable suspension system AHC or active height control, which used hydraulic dampers to vary the right height of the vehicle, is no longer available. The upside though is that for serious off-roading, the car is easier to lift without the height adjustable suspension. Overall, both 300 series and 200 are immensely capable off-road machines, and while the 300 has improved in its suspension and electronics, both will be more than adequate for challenging terrains. In conclusion, we can see that in terms of the styling and off-road hardware, the 300 series is only a mild evolution of the 200, and existing owners of the 200 will probably not feel the need to upgrade based on these areas. However, the interior is a massive improvement with much better quality, technology and design, while the drivetrain setup with the new twin-turbo V6 engines is also a much welcome upgrade over the old car, especially comparing like-for-like -like petrol models. So overall, the 300 is an impressive upgrade over the 200, although critically speaking, I am a little disappointed that, considering Toyota had so long to work on the car that they could not bring items such as a fully digital instrument cluster, a new height adjustable suspension for more city-focused versions, as well as increasing the wheelbase of the vehicle to improve interior space and match that of the competition such as the Nissan Patrol and Range Rover. What do you guys think of the 300 series? And what are your thoughts on the upgrades? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please like and subscribe to my channel to be the first to see more amazing content like this in the future. Cheers!